in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying and a true one that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like doughnuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs, they're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Cut the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, Give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this please. You cut down, you turn the potato and then you cut through the edge. First one way and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beets, you pickle them, and carrots, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, cross cut the slices, and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad, cut them the same way. Here is one, and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoestrings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers? Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champagne Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips, ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Why, well, I've seen ladies chop nuts, and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. 
put that in a grinder, you really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home, known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, Mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons. Makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies. If you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that? That machine is worth dollars to you. And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grater. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for your for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horse ready. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. Now here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp. When they get dull, a few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a sigh, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go around the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can, lift up the safety, and turn the key. That locks itself on the can. No harder than you were winding up your watch. Wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven. I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Catch a hold of the pie pan like this Why you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. 
But there's one more tool, and I'll be all through, and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool, and the last one, is what they call the Sarah Bernhardt Cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold, then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions. The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice cut the same size. In making what they call a rosette, pull the vegetable out like this. Pin the ends together with a toothpick. Drop that potato into the hot fat and fry it. That will come out like a doughnut golden brown. If you're serving a nice fish dinner, a little parsley goes in the center with the fish all around it. Makes a very appetizing dish. Did you ever try to slice onions with a knife? You know how you get one thick slice and one thin slice? Run the knife through the center. That will separate each slice individual. Almost like magic, there is every slice cut exactly the same thickness and the same size. Wouldn't you like to have a set like this in your kitchen? Why, of course you would. Now, don't forget, Attend this theater every week and receive this 12-piece fascinating <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the management of this theater takes great pleasure in making this announcement. To each lady attending this theater each week, will receive absolutely free a fascinating 12-piece kitchen cutlery set, one piece each time. It is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying and a true one that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you, and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like doughnuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs. They're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with a regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Chop the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell, just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this, please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way, and then the other. Sweet potatoes. Hey there, everyone. 
Uh, oh, okay, there we go. Um, I was wondering why I couldn't hear my microphone there a moment ago, but uh, it was because I was in the wrong scene. Um, how we doing tonight, everyone? Welcome in. Uh, we're doing Boston cream pie tonight, and uh, I'm just going to do a sort of simple dinner along with that. We're going to do some chicken and basmati. Use up some of that chicken stock we made uh, last week. Welcome in, Mama Bear and uh, Head Mama Bear. Hopefully you're both doing lovely tonight. Thank you. Um, so we're actually going to jump right in and make our custard. Make our custard. need to uh oh let's see are we gonna start this in a pot or a pan or a bowl double check my recipe here oh hey i didn't even open on this computer yet there we go Okay. Um, if you guys are following my Twitter, um, we're going to be fudging the ingredients with this a little bit tonight. I'm a little bit short on milk today. <laughs> and it's also why my floors are also sort of wet. I've had a fun afternoon of mopping and sweeping. And I haven't gotten to cleaning my stove properly here, and I'm realizing it's rather dirty back here. That's not good. Okay, to get ourselves started here, we're going to use up all of my half and half for the first shot here. And I'm going to have to thin out a little heavy cream to sub out for some other things later on with the cake. got a whole pint of half and half here. It's what's new in everyone else's world. What's everyone doing for dinner tonight? What's new? What, what have you seen? Have you shifted to a different part of the couch this week? Or... I'm figuring everyone's still stuck at home. I'm, I'm sure many of you have gone back to work too, but... Nice! Put this half and half here. just to bring it up to heat. And in the bowl here, we're gonna start with eggs and sugar. Did I actually do this right? I did do this right. I FIFO'd my eggs. And so, I think we just need yolks here. Nice. Oh, it's been so hot here. I'm 
I'd love some cool weather. We're doing soup here on uh, Sunday. It's the next stream. Get everything confused in my head because I have to plan for like two or three at a time. And then I have to separate it out to let you guys know what I'm doing. Um. What part of AZ? I think I said before while you've been around that I've lived in Phoenix before. Yep, I spent about six months in the Billborn district working. carefully clean my hands here and then immediately go and grab bags again. Yep. No, no, I wasn't there in the summer. I was there from November to April. <laughs> At least I think it was November and April. Didn't really matter though. The apartment complex I was in, uh, it was 90 degrees out most of the winter. And they still put the heat on. Yeah, I have no interest in. I have no interest in Vegas or Phoenix in midsummer or Austin. Um, any of these Southwest uh, cities pretending to not be deserts. And I've lived in LA, that's another one that I'm not going back to. sugar oh still got two more this six egg yolks we only got four here yeah I went out to LA right after college uh, with dreams, aspirations, and uh, half promises from businesses. I went out there with a uh, offer for a sous chef position and I got there and the hotel was under construction for another eight months um, they put me in a wine bar in Hollywood friend of a friend sort of a deal and uh, I really enjoyed working for that chef who uh, liked to swear to us when he got in the weeds and uh, throw pans at the dishwasher Not going back to LA. Hi, 
I definitely need to buy more salt. We're getting low. whip this together until it's well mixed. We start with lighten the yolks a little bit. The more you whip them, the more you incorporate air. The whiter they get. Um, you got a stand mixer. Give this a good 2-3 minutes. Yep, half cup. And we're also doing half cup flour. At least I think it's a half cup. Quarter cup. That would have been bad. Quarter cup. AP flour. and our vanilla extract. Now let's use actual extract. Where are you hidden? There you are. Don't want to go too heavy on that. Let's take a look at our half and half here, which that video saved me right there. Thank you for uh, saying that though, Mama Bear. Though the delay uh, didn't quite do it. Oh well. It is temporary. These are nice uh, Teflon inserts that I have. So once we're done here tonight, I'll pull those out and give those a clean. It'll clean right up. So that cream got a little warm, 
but not too warm, I don't think. And so we're going to turn in about half, a quarter of this in here. Make sure we get this all well mixed in there. And battle's gonna have to wait a couple minutes. Switch to spatula here for a moment. Pour all this in there. Okay. Ooh, nine, nine units. We might have a chance here. Boss battle here. I think we got this. Yeah. Victory. Gret's chocolate and head and mama bear. Awesome. I was worried there was going to be an update now. <laughs> They're doing a stream about the updates, or were earlier, I don't know if they still are. Um, there we go. Actually, I'm going to go back here and check out my army. Oh, I could have upgraded my tank. Boo-hoo. No. Let's see if we got any goodies in the store tonight. I'm going to skip those. Go back here to the battlefield. And while we're on this discussion here, in a little discussion here, um, We'll go over here to the uh, Discordian because I need to make a plea with you guys to uh, please give me some ingredient suggestions and please uh, give me some votes for those uh, ingredients that are already here on the list. Um, we have some good candidates here, I think, for future weeks, but uh, we don't have any votes for anything across the board. If you don't like anything there, add something to the list. Please. Okay. Done pleading. Um, let's go back to the stove here. We have to cook this guy, so now. 
we got this warm. Now we need to cook it. We need to get the flour cooked and we need to bring it up to heat. I'm start by putting this on medium. Let's see, do I have that turned down? Oh, nope. We're going to turn up the gain on the stove a little bit here. About like that. Um, we're going to keep stirring this. Once we get this up to a nice simmerish temp here, we're going to lower it medium low and we're going to have to whisk this continuously for, oh, a little under 10 minutes. So now I'm just about, I just turned it down there. We're getting enough steam here that I think we're up at a decent temp. And so now it's just above a boil uh, as far as the temperature of the stove. And this is going to thicken up here. We're going to evaporate some of this uh, liquid out of our milk mixture. And we're going to cook that flour, which is going to thicken it up. But it's also going to help kill that flour flavor. Already pretty thick there. Oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. Okay, I think that's good right about there. It hasn't been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna cut the heat and continue whisking. Next we have to whisk in a bunch of butter, I believe. What do you know? Four tablespoons on the dot. Using their cheat sheet.
turn the heat back on here, back around, just barely hold the boil level, and keep going until we get all that butter mixed in there, make it all nice and glossy. There we go. It's nice and thick. That's not going to run anywhere when it cools down. We put, put it in between those two layers of cake for our Boston green pie. Nope, Mama Bear. I've sort of shied away from recipes. Um, mostly because they're not copyrightable. If you notice, vast majority the vast majority still picking up and back. The vast majority are uh, done by people of the moment, who's who's a star right now, and it's because the book content itself is copyrightable, but the recipes are pretty much free reign. And so there's no my recipes in this world. Unless, like, you or I choose to respect it as someone's. But this one is pretty straightforward. We're stealing it from America's Test Kitchen. is also stealing it. Um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of it. The famous Boston hotel that this is originates from. Okay, so we're gonna take some parchment, butter, since I don't have spray oil or something like that. Why, hello there, Raiders! Uh, well, actually, let's just do oil. Welcome in, everyone. Hopefully everyone's having a lovely day here. How we doing, Mr. Bland Diggity? What were we streaming? Hey, CF. I'm spreading a little veg oil over on a piece of parchment right now that I'm going to place on top of that uh, pastry cream right up there. so that we can let it cool without forming too much of a skin. And this is gonna be essentially our icing between the two pieces of the cake here. If you're familiar with Boston cream pie, it's not a pie. We're making cake, not pie. Sorry, pie lovers. So that'll go in the fridge just like that. There's room. Good 
we forget about that for. Oh! Thank you for that sub, CF Live. Great musician, you guys should go check him out. He was playing eight hours ago. Thank you for that, sub. Just save these egg whites. Might need these for the cake later. Let's see what all we need here. Nope, we just need three whole eggs. Guess I'm making the omelet later. <laughs> We got the ghost team up here for uh, Halloween too, but I don't know if I get another, if I don't get another slot rather, um, that one's probably going to disappear pretty quick and Lou for something else. Um, I have a couple other ideas I'd like to do here before the end of the year. sorts of shopping today. Got all sorts of veggies. So we're, oops. That wasn't what I meant to do. That wasn't what I meant. That wasn't what I meant to do. Or that. It's actually the first time I actually used those. <laughs> I got another one that I have set up that I haven't found the right situation in chat for yet. We're doing rosé today. A uh, cheapy. It's a cheap French wine. Seven, eight dollars in the store. I forget exactly. Um, do you happen to have a nice little affiliate link there if you <laughs> buy your groceries from uh, uh, Amazon? <laughs> Okay. Well, that just, that didn't help. Let's do that a little bit more here. That just clouded up there for a second. So hopefully everyone's having a good day. Anyone uh, cook anything interesting tonight? Sharp acidic, a little uh, citrusy, maybe a little uh, stone fruity. Hot dogs, nice. I posted a, a, a rather food and wine and I reposted it um, on Facebook or Twitter. Twitter. Too many twig names. Um, but there's a recent article there, the best, according to Food and Wine, uh, hot dog plate joints in every state. There's been some controversy over some of them. 
Oh, the lovely little egg on my board. So let's start making some cake here. I don't know if he has if he's seen it or not. I know, he's been doing uh, hot dog drawings all month here. Another uh, former mixer streamer you guys should check out if you're not familiar. Let's look at this cake recipe for a moment here. We got one and a half cups, AP flour, baking powder, salt, milk, um, three quarters stick of butter. Does that need to be warmed up? I think that needs to be warmed up. No, no, we're melting it. Oven on 325. You want me to turn it down a touch? Oops. Yeah, that's a little loud, isn't it? There we go, we'll go to 4%. <laughs> Welcome in, Big Davey, how you doing tonight? Have a good day at work? Second bowl. And need that. begins my uh, substituting heavy cream instead of milk, if anyone's watching my Twitter. <coughs> Lost a pint of half and half to the floor earlier tonight. And so I have sweeped and mopped the floors and I'm probably gonna have to mop them again after we're done here, but we're looking okay right now. I just figure I'm going to get them dirty again. <laughs> um, yeah, shifting things around in the fridge and it popped off the shelf and went sploosh. Um, need a half cup for that. And so we're gonna do a half cup. Might still, I could almost do all of this in heavy cream, but. This does have a uh, cream top to it, which if you guys are not familiar, premium slash old school dairies will put uh, a little squirt of pure cream on the top of their milks and their creams. Um, and that way it solidifies into sort of like a fat cap on the top of the liquid, which helps preserve the milk to actually stay longer on the shelf. 
I mean, once you break it open, it's broken, but. This is some, I, I always tout these guys. Um, I should get them to pay me. But uh, they are the first organic dairy in the US. And uh, they're now carbon neutral. Let's see what all they got on here now. Oh, they're not listing all that stuff, but they're carbon neutral. They have uh, uh, methane, di methane digesters helping power their dairy. Good stuff and a lot of people think it's pricier than it is because they have real glass bottles and so there's a two dollar return on them and so depending on where you are you look at that price it's two dollars more expensive than their competitors even though if you return the bottle you're getting that back And so we're going to add a half, half, half cup, so quarter cup of water in with that cream. And how much butter again? Six tablespoons. But I grew up around a decent dairy too that I missed from there. Uh, grew up in Michigan. A couple of decent dairies in Michigan. So we got. For the record, I'm following a recipe here, if that isn't obvious at this point. Um, many times, I will just freewheel it. Um, I've not made Boston cream pie before, and so I want to try and follow the recipe somewhat closely here. And so I'm taking a little bit more time than I normally do to read things through. Nice. put this on a low flame uh, one of my trips was to Domino's headquarters and because the the c-suite guys were visiting headquarters that day they decided to wipe out a full day's plans for my school and send us out on a lame uh, hayride and sent us pack and halfway through And my family hasn't done dominoes really ever since. <laughs> and I grease our non stick pans here.
So it's sort of odd with me being a bit of a culinary junkie and my childhood memory pizza is mostly Little Caesars, which is pizza, but it's, I don't really classify it as pizza though. It's different pizza. It's like, I don't even know what they're using for their flour. It ain't normal flour. I want to say it's like chickpea flour or something. And they use real cheese, if you know the reality about the real logo with cheese. Nate, real cheese. Um, flour, baking powder, and soda. Or salt, not soda. This is my AP flour container. So if you're seeing the square container like this, that's my AP flour. Which, actually I'm so surprised that you mentioned that, that this is not Cake, cake or uh, pastry flour. But this regular AP flour. at least for us in America. Spoons, baking powder. So you got three half teaspoons there. Basically putting our dry ingredients here together ahead of time. And that is sort of pink looking, but that is my salt. Let's do our battle. Which, if you guys are not familiar, Battle uh, or uh, Stream Raiders is now open to uh, everyone to be captains. If you guys are interested in trying this out with your own streams. Well, that was quick. Victory. What's inside? Congrats, said Mama Bear. I don't even see anything on that field. Oh well. Ugh. 
Though, as it says, there will be enemies that are revealed over time here, so. Back to wet ingredients. Now we got our dry ingredients together. Put this over here. Take a quick wine break. Thanks for stopping by, CF. Hope you have a great night. We got three eggs. Oh, see, that was a mistake. I already know that was a mistake. Eh, I might be okay with that. Turn the heat off on that. I'm not even giving you guys the show here. How much sugar in this half? One and a half cups now. Have a good night, fish. Well, thank you for stopping by. And I just realized I have another bag of gummy worms that I hadn't opened up for Wednesday. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you're not familiar, I'm doing ingredient challenges on Wednesdays. I'm running votes every week in Discord. Right now, I've got um, vote going on between uh, baby food and pop tarts for next Wednesday. So next Wednesday I'm either going to have to use baby food or pop tarts and I'm going to have to make a savory dinner and a dessert with it. So um, we have a, both an ingredient voting channel in Discord and an ingredient suggestion channel. Ingredient suggestion channel Make suggestions, please. Go make votes, because uh, I, I need people uh, helping out with suggestions and new ideas and stuff to add into the list. Um, right now, we really don't have any votes for next week, so uh, I don't have any. I, I have items that I could pick from, but no one's picked favorites. Perfect.
last Wednesday was uh, gummy worms, as I was saying. Um, and I made gummy worm pate. An actual, I don't know where it's sitting in there now. I don't want to go bearing. But uh, chicken liver and pork pate. Traditional French style one with shallots and apple brandy. And then I used gummy worms with a grape juice base in their ingredient list. So I thought the flavors might work as a sort of wine flavor. And the gelatin obviously wasn't going to hurt the pate. Uh, my main concern was the sugar was gonna make it too sweet. And it was sweeter, but I think it was okay. It was good. So we're beating the heck out of this till we get our eggs nice and light here. If you notice those yellow eggs aren't so yellow anymore. Let's make sure I got everything here together right before we uh, put everything together. to the better vanilla. Why am I... <clears throat> I messed myself up here when I changed my game on this guy over here. I'm getting way too much echo. I get a couple of streams in where I'm like really happy with the audio and then I'll tweak something and it takes a month until it gets me back the way I like it. Okay, last whisk up here. This is another one of those, if you got a stand mixer, just let it go for five minutes. We're gonna whisk in our butter and uh, milk here. Welcome in there, Jane Henry. How are you? Yep, yep. I'm... You're down in Oakland, I believe. I am up in Sonoma. Or rather, our milk and uh, butter here, since I'm subbing in a little heavy cream and water instead of milk because unfortunate accident this afternoon. Wednesday was gummy worms, I'm sorry. We, we did uh, gummy worm pate and 
uh, chocolate pudding dirt with worms. Um, tonight, it's National uh, Boston Cream Pie Day. So we're working on making Boston Cream Pie. We have our cake just about wrapped up here. We have our dairy and our wet ingredients mixed. And we have our dry ingredients ready to go in here now. Oh, that's stuck to the bottom. Must have had some water in the bottom of this bowl or something. I'm also going to make something simple for dinner for myself. I'm going to do, uh, I got some chicken breasts over here drying with the fan. And so I'll do some chicken and rice. I made chicken stock on stream here last week, last Sunday. So we'll use a little of that up. As typical with cakes here, we're mostly just mixing to combine. That's good enough for me. See if these guys will fit on a half hotel together. Not really. Gonna do them separate then. But I greased these earlier and they're not stick to begin with. And parchment. I think I'm gonna skip it. Highly accurate measuring here. But Jane Henry, uh, do you have uh, baby food or uh, Pop-Tarts in the Discord vote right now for next Wednesday? So we got our oven already preheated to uh, 325. Let's throw these guys in there. Already got our pastry cream. Here chilling down supposed to be covered with our parchment bit there. Started with that first thing because it needs to chill out in the fridge. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for the raid, Landigity. I appreciate that so much. I hope you have a great night. Um, I don't know if I caught what you were playing tonight. Uh, were you playing music or were you playing games tonight? Either way, if you're already gone, hope you have a great night. So we got the major parts there of our kick going. We got our, uh... oh nice. 
Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll, a whole bunch of you. Awesome. Yeah, I wish I could get myself addicted to a game again. It's been so long since I've been able to uh, put that, like, encouragement towards an individual game. But, uh, thanks for the raid. Hope you have a great night. Throw the cream back in the fridge. We're gonna need that for our chocolate at the end. But I think we're gonna switch here to working on dinner. Do dinner tonight. Do we want to throw anything in there interesting? Um, got a whole bunch of veggies in here. Let's throw a shallot in there. Why not? Let's throw a tomato in there too. If you're following my Twitter, I got a photo up there of all the goodies I grabbed from the farmer's market. Got myself another grab-and-go box of uh, fennel, kale, broccoli this week, the cauliflower last week, um, shallots, tomatoes, butterball potatoes. Um, what all else was in there? Um, couple heads of lettuce. Gonna make a salad tonight um, to go with chicken. We got some arugula and we got little gem lettuce heads, which I love those guys. They're, I don't think I've ever seen them in a supermarket, but they're basically these cutesy little lettuce heads. They're perfect for one person or maybe a two person side salad. for that way well uh, talk Jason thank you for that follow welcome in awaken bra somehow I have a feeling that someone that was in a chat room I was in last night Well, we got Boston cream pie going on. We got our cakes in the oven and our pastry cream cooling down. It's National Boston Cream Pie Day. And beyond that, I'm working on sort of a simple dinner for myself. Main thing is the Boston cream pie today. I'm chopping up some shallot. We're gonna saute the shallot, add a little tomato, cook some rice with that. I got a couple chicken breasts in my syrup. Uh, maybe throw some herbs with that. It's sort of simple with dinner. That slipped on me. Certainly save you some cash and 
certainly allow you to uh, have good food, at, good food at home. Still can't talk. Good food at home that's better quality that you get at a restaurant. Maybe harder to find the ingredients that restaurants do. But when you're in a restaurant, the food that you're paying, the money you're paying for your food, roughly 30% is going towards your food. And here in California, it's probably much less. So we'll get this simmering away. Oh, I'm using up all my stuff for the... Okay. Set a timer for those cakes before I get forget. A little sunflower oil for sauteing. Let me guess, new update. No. Oh, yep. <laughs> so we're probably gonna have to update stream readers here, yep. So I'm gonna go ahead and update that now. so that we can run our next battle here in seven minutes. Oh, come on, coat the pan. There we go. Sorry for the echo, guys. I, I messed around with my mic and back. And it's screwing everything up now. So weird. It's almost like my Ducking isn't working at all. Or compressor. Um. Oh well. So medium high temp. a little garlic in there too. Luxuries of having stuff around. Eh, why not? I do need to get rid of that garlic head. These guys are going gonna be needing garlic again soon and it's gonna be a long time until we get garlic fresh again.
even have any stock. Urgh. My freezer's over here if you haven't figured that out. Or rather, my chest freezer. That's true. It's been a while since I've gotten Christopher Ranch. I've been buying a uh, hardneck at the farmer's markets. This being one of the uh, already, already frozen. frozen. Um, Back chicken, chicken stock from Sunday. Oh, hey. It's cooking a little hot, ain't it? That's one way to cool it down. Okay, I'm tired of that echo. Um, so I shut off the other mic. You're not gonna get as much stove action though. Picked these tomatoes up at the farmer's market today in Sonoma. Great small little market. It's actually a uh, Coupe de Mon, uh, former uh, number two in the world baker who's there uh, making loaves. Some of the best. Uh, baguettes I've ever had in my life came from that man. Oh, come on, knife. Once I open the program again. When honing it doesn't do any better. <laughs> Though honestly I've been needing to sharpen this guy for a while. And if you look at him, I've had him for a long time and through many mistakes in my sharpening. Oh, I can't, you're not seeing that. Many mistakes in my sharpening and this is actually my uh, school issue knife. So I've had this guy almost 20 years. Um, also regularly use uh, 
this guy, which this guy is done. Um, and this guy. I've had them all around the same length of time. This one, the tang has actually broken. I super glued it back in with a little silicone around the edge. Um, these knives have both been boiled, um, which is not good for knives, but is sort of a requirement because I worked at a resort with a very large, um, I'm not Jewish myself, but a very large uh, Jewish population that would come in. And so everything I did, I owned at the time, was properly blessed and boiled. Um, they ran a completely separate kosher kitchen. Um, so I'm actually sort of on the edge of being in the market for a new knife, but um, I just haven't, I, I'm going to have to drive into the city. There, there's no more uh, uh, knife shops around. They all close. Uh, I'm going to have to go to one of the nice ones in San Francisco. So those 24 ounces of chicken stock. We'll turn the heat up on that so that it actually melts. Oh, battle. Went and forgot about that again already. Oh, like two things popped up here. Oh, we got some rats down here too. Let's give it a shot here, Head Mama Bear. Got another four and a half minutes on our cakes before we give them a first look at. Uh, Jane, if you're wondering, between like sharpening and honing, I don't know how much you know about knives and the differences and that. Basically, when you're honing a knife, you have your edge, and your edge is sort of like a straight up and down, um, sort of like you're holding your hands. Um, a straight, straight up and down blade. And when you're honing it, your edge has gone like this, or it's gone like that, and you're bringing it back true. Um, you're not really sharpening anything. You're just correcting what what has happened to the metal there. Um, when you're actually sharpening, you're taking that knife that's now dull, that's been worn down, doesn't have that point anymore, and giving that point back to it.
And so I say when you can't hone in anymore, but the reality is also once you've been sharpening your knives and once you know what your knives feel like, um, you can feel the edge and you can feel a burr on either side if you've got that needing to be honed or you can, but this guy just needs to be sharpened. Not necessarily, um, but when, when you're sharpening, it means something different because when you sharpen, you sharpen until you get a nice clean burr on the entire side. Well, depending on which method you use for sharpening. When you're hand sharpening, the way I was sort of taught, the sort of beginner method way, is you're sharpening until you make that obvious burr on the other side and then you sharpen to remove that bar that burr and then you can hone it um like i said the more experienced you are the more feel there is the more i'm not an experienced sharpener i handle my knives once twice a year sort of a thing um when i was working Yes, you often hone after sharpening because often you get like little strand burrs or um, shavings that are almost microscopic from your uh, sharpening and that's going to knock them off. Um, or actually um, a lot of people will hit it with leather. Well, which different type of honing, same sort of, same me same mentality. Um, you can draw a blade against your jeans with the fabric in the right direction, and you can <laughs> you can actually hone a blade with your your jeans. I wouldn't want to do that regularly, but it's possible. I'm going to go through this out. I'll be right back. Just in time for our cakes. Okay, I'm giving those more time. I'm gonna give him another three minutes. Add our tomatoes in here. This core piece. Measure out some basmati rice here. So it's a cup and a quarter. Rice. 
give that a rinse off here. Add our rice into our not quite boiling liquid. That should be at a boil quickly though. And oh, we need this guy now. So I'm gonna take our chicken breasts and transfer them here to cutting board so I can use my pry tin as a pot lid. Oh, and while Kozlowski uh, Farms is an actual business, um, I believe they're going out of business. I believe their property is for sale. So, it is an actual pie company here in Sonoma County, but. And I used to like their pies, but I think it was family transition time or something for them. Quick scrub this bowl before I check for the cakes. Yeah. Drying rack. Actually, I should probably get both of them out of there. Both clean, actually. Usually use one of these for my teppanyaki grill. I think we're good there. It's got a nice bounce back to it. Same thing here. I think we're good there. I'm going to give those five, ten minutes in the pan to begin to cool off. Um, sure, debating what time is the best time to do our chocolate glaze here. Because that's sort of our major time point here. It's either glaze or sautéing chicken. Oh wow, all sorts of guys popping up over there. 
Um, so we got 10 minutes going on my refrigerator timer for the rice. We got these cooling down for the rest of that time. I think we're hanging out and having a sip of wine. Seeing how everyone in chat's doing tonight. Uh, oh wow, there's all sorts of people in there tonight. Welcome everyone. All sorts of streamers in there too, you guys should all be checking out. Um, I'll do another plea here for uh, the Discord. We have, I don't know how we got all the way over there. Um, our ingredient suggestions page for our Wednesday ingredient challenges. Um, we have guidelines and information here. Please come in here and uh, give some uh, some votes or uh, make some suggestions of your own guys. Um, I'd love your guys' help in this. Um, we've got uh, nothing here going for next week, so. Uh, I'm probably just going to end up picking for which ones I want to do. Uh, Wednesday night, we already got the vote going here. We got Pop-Tarts versus uh, Baby Food. And uh, currently Baby Food's in the lead there. I don't know, I almost think Pop-Tarts is a little bit more of a challenge. Because, I mean, Baby Food is just pureed veggies, isn't it? But we'll use whichever uh, you guys choose. So that's my plea for Discord. You vote by uh, clicking on the chef icon. Since you can only do, you can only react to it once. It either takes it on or takes it off. Does mean that you can vote for both of them, but you can only vote once for both of them. And same thing for ingredient suggestions. I'm gobbling along and throwing a chef reaction to all of them. And so all you have to do is click on one of the Chef logo's there, and that counts as a vote for one of those ingredients. And the ones that have the most votes get selected. First come, first serve with the most votes go to the Wednesday vote. And this will be finished up on Monday. And uh, so... I don't have a specific time on Monday. I just decide at some point on Monday, it's time to plan things for the week. And uh, so we, we cut it off then. Or I cut it off then. I, I don't know why I speak in plural half of the time when I'm on stream. I don't know. Everyone does it. Okay, four minutes. Let's do some chocolate. I don't know if that's enough for what I want to do. I was thinking I had a little more chocolate than this. Close. 
need four gra four ounces. Measuring it here over my, I have a little stand over here where I have a bunch of scales and my coffee stuff. I am going to, since I am here streaming, I'm doing this live for you guys. I am pushing times here. If you're doing this at home, you're around home, let things cool down more. Um, so, <laughs> well, I don't know, Arky. Um, are those more beautiful words than let's do some bacon? For those that are uninformed, Arky is an absolute bacon nut. Second place to bacon. So, inverting our first cake onto a plate. If it wants to fall, which it doesn't. So we're gonna take a plastic spatula, and make sure that it's loose. That fell. I felt that right off. There we go. Ooh, nice bottom on that guy. But we want it on this side. So we get that nice top. Do the same with our other guy here. like that side better. I almost want to leave that up on top other than a little edge here. Oh, I like him. That's a nice cake. That was relatively simple if you were watching too. I mean, I took forever sitting there reading the recipe, but that was a rather simple recipe. We'll set that guy over here to cool down as well. Those of you just joining in, didn't see the start of this stream. We started off with our custard. So that's already here, chilling down. Um, that was the first thing we did. So that's nice. Hopefully, uh, nice and tasty. Ready to go from when we got everything else. Let's take a look at our rice. Our rice should be ready now. Heavy on the stock there. Mm. 
Let's hit that with a little MSG. Fresh pepper. And salt. Pulling out the little salt scoop because I'm getting so low on that. It's hard to even grab it with my fingers anymore. So I'll let that continue to hang out. I'm not worried about it being a little soupy. S simple quick dinner tonight. This is the real star of the show tonight. Well, and this $8 uh, rosé, which not too bad. I mean, it's an easy drinker. It's nothing spectacular. I mean, for eight bucks, you, you shouldn't be expecting spectacular. But this is an easy drinker. This is a nice summertime beach, uh, acidic um, palate cleanser, a little bit of a uh, stone fruit, but mostly acidic, bright and fresh. No parky. We got rice and chicken breasts here for dinner dinner. And that's just sort of, I need something to eat tonight. The cake's the real star of the show tonight. Or is it cake? Is it pie? What do you guys say? Is this cake or is this pie? It's Boston cream pie. But we're making cakes. What is it? Let's set this guy off to the side. We need something to make our Considering that I'm not from Boston, I have a certain disdain for the Bruins. Um, I'd be okay with calling it Boston Pie. I, I don't know if we have any Boston fans here in chat tonight. But for sports that I spend a little more time paying attention to these days, we do have an awesome F1 race coming up this weekend um, on a circuit that essentially none of them have experience with. I don't think any of them have ran an F1 car around it. It's been over 20... I don't think even Kimmy has. Um... But, uh, so it's an interesting year this year for Formula One. I've been really enjoying it. No pen, Mama Bear. We're just about getting ready to go with our, uh, um, chocolate glaze here. But we're sort of waiting on our, I'm sort of procrastinating. Give our cake a little time to cool down. We're almost to the point where I'm comfortable putting that custard on it. But we still got the chicken here. It's just been sitting out in front of the fan. Um, if you guys are doing chicken, I, I'm horrible at doing this. Um, but what I really recommend you guys do is unbag your stuff the day ahead. Give it a good rinse. 
put it on a plate or something, open air. Maybe a towel over it if you got a bunch of crap in your uh, in your refrigerator. But open air so that it dries out. Um, and don't buy uh, chicken from uh, Tyson. Uh, look at your packaging. Tyson... Which, they're the biggest chicken producer. I'm sure you guys are buying them anyways, whether I say so or not. Um, look at their packaging. If you're lucky, it's 10 to 12% uh, water added. Lucky. It's, it's usually more than that. And so you're paying... When you're buying that cheap chicken from them... It's because 10% of it is pumped water. But uh, if you put it in the fridge, you allow it to dry out. The less moisture you have on your surface of your proteins, when you go to sear them, the better sear you're going to get. So for our chocolate glaze, I'm going to add a couple tablespoons worth of uh, corn syrup there. And the rest of our half and half, or our heavy cream. How much heavy cream? Half cup. Not the rest. Half cup. <laughs> well, you've caught most of it, Mama Bear. I mean, I think you were here until I put these guys in the oven. Our pastry cream is nicely uh, cooling down. Still needs another couple minutes though, the last time I was in there. Let's give it a last. Let's give it one more check. That's ah, relatively cool. I don't. I, I certainly don't feel any heat on the bottom of the pan. I think we're good with that. So let's. This is parchment with a little oil on it. So there's a little oil on the gloss there. Let's turn on our cream and sugar here, or corn syrup. We've got Mama Bear, we got some rice with tomatoes, garlic, and shallot. That's just sort of hanging out here. That was cooked in chicken stock from last uh, Sunday. And I shouldn't have that on my board. I don't know why I did that. For you guys that don't know, don't put, just don't put pans on your board. When it's cold, that's one thing. But the vast majority of the time, when you're working with pans, especially if you're working with a glass flame or a gas flame, if you don't have a clean flame, you're gonna get soot. 
And so that soot then transfers to your board. It's not what you want on your board. That's one of those things that's like impossible to get out. Um, you get those gas greases and nasty stuff. Most people don't pay half the attention to the outside or back of their uh, pots as they do with the inside because they figure that's where the food's going. Um, don't put pans on your cutting board. I see people do that all the time on Twitch, on any streaming service. I saw people do it all the time on Mixer, too. But this is a horrible idea. It's not good for the wood, either. So, rant over. So we'll take a whisk here, sort of break this back up, make this nice and smooth now that it's cooled down. Nice thick cream there, not going to spread when we put it on there. I'm putting cream in my uh, coffee tomorrow after spilling all my half and half earlier. So we got that up to a relatively warm temp here. Maybe just under a simmer here. I think we're good probably for adding our chocolate in there. using semi-sweet guitar. Guitar's my favorite. Um, general use chocolate. Oops, trying to spill it all over the place here. We'll let that hang out for a moment. We'll work on our pastry cream. So you just sort of want this cover the entire top here. Nice thick layer of it's thicker than I was expecting it to be of uh, cream here. I mean that's thick. Two C's.
our second cake here. I think I'm actually gonna flip this guy over. Yeah. Just like that. Working on making sure we're all melted here. <laughs> Jane Henry. Uh, let's give this a rinse. And for the final touch here, I was worried I was going to have to spread that around on top. Ended up maybe being just slightly too much. I, I know too much chocolate is not really a thing, but as far as appearances and perfect amount for this cake, that might have been slightly over. <laughs> a little bacon. I think that's going to be good. Unfortunately, that has to rest. We got to let that chocolate chill out. I'm not going to be able to give you guys a photo of that on stream. We're going to have to do uh, Instagram and uh, Twitch like usual a little bit later. It's still doing its sore thing laying down. Oh. So yummy. Let's get to our chicken here. Let's make ourselves some dinner. Tenderloin off. Slice, slice you in half. Tenderloin off. Slice you in half. Let's do a big guy. Thank you, Mama Bear. I know you've been here since the start. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great dinner. We're just gonna finish up this chicken plate up ourselves some uh, chicken and rice. I'm going to go and enjoy that afterwards with a little of this um, cheap but enjoyable rosé. Um, also have coming up here, for you guys unfamiliar, I do have at least a month of upcoming stream info in the info section down below if you're on a website take a look at that 
we got uh, Sunday I'm going to be doing um, sort of a minestrone, sort of an end of summer summer soup. Going to do some fresh bread, got some uh, Italian sausage. Um, Wednesday we have pop tarts or baby food. Friday we're doing Halloween. It's going to be my Halloween focus day. Uh, I might have a costume here on Sunday. But uh, next Friday, the 30th, going to be doing stuffed uh, carnival squash. I know it says acorn squash down below, but generally the same thing. It's a hybrid. Um, going to be doing that along with uh, my own take on caramel apples, which is not your standard take. You guys are going to want to check that out. So uh, that's what's coming up here next week. Uh, also got a bunch of interesting days coming up. So uh, I hope you check out what's coming up on the stream. We got this pan at a high heat. Got a little sunflower oil. Take our chicken here and season everything up. A little salt, pepper, MSG. You guys know me, I throw MSG on everything. Well, now you're going to go traditional chicken and rice, or you're just going to freewheel like I am time. I mean, chicken and rice, there's people that are serious about their chicken and rice. I'm, I'm not one of them. But I do like some chicken and rice. Just like I like chicken and waffles. That's something else I'm doing on beginning in next month. We got that. We got, like I said, the minestrone. We got, um, oh, I have such a horrible memory. Yeah, it's been a little less than a year for me, so definitely due time. This side of my pan is always hotter than this side, so I'm moving, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm moving the smaller guys over here and big guys on this side. That looks good. I want that pie. 
Cake, pie. We'll just leave that here for you guys to stare at while I deal with that chicken. That nice gloss chocolate over the top. Or, did I just say gloss chicken? Did I say that? I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> okay. A little more faith in myself. Just that much. I already got this plate dirty. That guy is done. Almost there on that guy. Need a little more time over here. This is pretty much done. Let's take a couple photos of our Boston cream pie. Their chicken infested knife next to it. Oh wow, I basically coated the entire outside on this guy. 
There we go. Maybe we'll get a little good side fix photo action here. One last piece going there. Oh, we got a battle ready to go. Let's do our battle. Go Rogue, go! Let's see what we got here. Got a berserker and a monk. And bomber. Paladin. Okay. You got a tank in there too? Nice. I think we got this. Oh yeah. Victory. Um, I think we're going to leave it there for tonight. Hope we don't set off my bedroom smoke alarm here. Go ahead and close that. Put this guy in the back here. Like I said before, photos of this guy. Instagram, Twitter, I'm going to put them everywhere. We got our chicken. Just very simple. Uh, salt, pepper, MSG, and we need a bowl. Some of our rice with tomato, shallot, garlic, and chicken stock. Chicken stock. And we'll take that guy. And let's do this guy too. shiitakes I should have thrown a few uh, shiitakes in there
There we go. Quick photo of that guy too while we're at it. With our chicken infested knife. Oh, I'm sorry, is my title wrong here tonight? Is that why you had that chain, Henry? Did I not change my title? Um, gummy Worms, I'm doing a weekly uh, ingredient challenge, uh, WGWRF, apologize. Um, and so on Wednesdays, I'm having people vote in Discord. Right now we've got a Discord vote between Pop-Tarts and Baby Food for next Wednesday. But yes, we, we did uh, uh, gummy worms as our winning ingredient last Wednesday. Um, and what I did with those was I made the somewhat traditional um, pudding dirt recipe, dessert recipe with gummy worms. And then I also put them, I put some grape juice based uh, gummy worms in a chicken liver and pork pate figuring the grape juice would work sort of like a wine in flavoring. Um, and you have the gelatin, which that's not gonna bother a pate. And a uh, little bit of sugar. And it turned out all right. There, there's a picture of that up on uh, Twitter. Well, I apologize for that. I thought I had, ch I thought I had updated my uh, title for the stream. We're just wrapping up here tonight. We've got Boston Cream Pie that we wrapped up a little bit earlier. This has to chill and allow the chocolate to cool down. Now let's give you a main view here. So we have Boston Cream Pie because today is National Boston Cream Pie Day. Yeah, it's not too, it, it worked out pretty good. It was a little bit sweet, which, not horrible, but, and then we got our chicken and rice for dinner tonight. Just a sort of simple chicken with basmati rice, uh, garlic, shallot, uh, tomato, and some chive. Uh, and so I'm wrapping things up here. Uh, happy with the wine tonight rather simple drinking don't don't expect uh, complexity out of this guy for eight bucks but uh, it, it's nice acidic good palate cleanser not too shabby I don't drink a ton of French wines the one I want white wine I always think French um, Let's see who we can give a host to here tonight. Um, give some love to tonight. Sort of an odd mix of people on tonight. Not a lot of people doing cooking cooking. We gotta cut a couple uh, cooking streamers on, but they're doing other cooking, other stuff tonight. I think I'm going to give a host up to this guy who's got a rather chill stream. He is a Twitch partner. Um, but I enjoy hanging out in his stream. I hope you guys enjoy it too. Uh, I hope you guys all have a great night. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys with Mr. Horologist. 
doing some uh, watch repairs. Very chill stream, very, very lax stream. A uh, lot of detail work. I'm gonna go and enjoy this lovely dinner. I will be back here on Sunday. Sunday we're doing end of summer soup, sort of a minestrone play. We got some squash, I got some beans, some pasta. Uh, I'll throw the rest of the stuff from this weekly's grab and go box in there. Should be a good veggie soup. Some fresh bread, I got some Italian sausage. And we'll be back on uh, Wednesday after that with either baby food or Pop-Tarts. And please, give me some more ingredients to choose from. The, the, the vote is on there for Pop-Tarts or uh, uh, baby food. But I, I need some for next week, too. So, so please go into the ingredient suggestions and give me some ideas, too. Thank you guys all for joining me tonight. I hope you have a great night. I will see you on Sunday.